Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So I, like many other people, saw this video a couple days ago and it really got me thinking. Why do we put so much emphasis on trying to replicate a meat dish with fruits and vegetables or other ingredients when there's so many cultural dishes that already do the work for you and they're just as flavorful, they're just as filling, and they're just as satisfying. I'm not a devout vegetarian, and I'll be honest, I probably never will be, but I have been making a conscious decision to try to limit my meat intake. For me personally, when I eat meat too many days consecutively, I start to notice that I feel really groggy and really sluggish, and I'm not really feeling 100% me. So I have to break up the monotony of eating meat every single day and incorporate vegetarian dishes into my diet. So I know that a lot of the time people see vegetarian dishes as really mundane and really boring and they're just limited to salads and brown rice. So many cultures around the world have perfected vegetarian dishes, whether it be because of religious purposes, ethical beliefs, environmental preservation, or just health factors in general. Either way, you're not limited to just a salad or even a smoked watermelon. So in this video, I'm going to be exploring four different vegetarian dishes from various countries across the world. So I not only got to eat delicious food, but it also encouraged me to eat more meals at home and not worry so much about takeout food. So as many of you already know, we're in the middle of the pandemic and I live in California. So understandably so, we're not able to dine in at restaurants. So by cooking my meals at home, I got to do just that. I got to enjoy being at home where it's safe. Another result of the pandemic is a lot of businesses are either having to close down or they're just taking a really big hit financially. Some of the ingredients that I had to use for the recipes were only available at local specialty stores and they weren't available at chain grocery stores. And honestly, I'm glad that that's where I was able to spend my money because I know it's going back into my community. A lot of the time we feel powerless to some of the bigger things that are going on around the world within our own community, but these small gestures really help to reiterate my responsibility as well as my power that I have, not just in my community, but my responsibility I have to the world. Anyways, got a little bit off topic there. I love food, I love exploring different cultures through food, so let's get right into it. So the first dish that I made was Yelanchi. This is an Armenian dish and it's basically a stuffed grape leaf actually started off by making sort of a mixture between a garlic sauce and a tzatziki sauce using plain yogurt, lemon, garlic, and dill. This sauce is super easy to make, but it makes such a big difference and it makes such a great addition to the meal. I like to eat this with pita bread, so this makes a really good dipping sauce for both the yolanchi and the pita bread. So this is how it looked when it was finished. I actually made this a couple hours beforehand just to give it time to sit in the fridge and for all the flavors to combine. So these are the ingredients for the stuffing that goes inside of the grape leaves. It was olive oil, salt, freshly chopped parsley, the juice of half a lemon, tomato paste, sugar, cinnamon, allspice, chopped white onion, and basmati rice. I started off by heating up the pan with some olive oil and sauteing the onions until they were nice and golden brown and somewhat translucent. So I've actually had this particular dish at Armenian restaurants a couple of times, so I'm using those experiences kind of as a reference point as to how I want my dish to come out. My husband was actually the one that introduced me to Armenian food. The first time I had this, I thought it was so delicious. After the onions are nice and golden brown, I added in the basmati rice as well as the tomato paste and a little bit of water just to get a little simmer going to start to cook the rice. As soon as it started to boil, I put a lid on the pan, turned it to low, and then let it cook on low for about 20 to 25 minutes. So this is what it looks like once it was done. I transferred it over to a bowl and I let it cool for a couple of minutes just so it wasn't too hot to handle when I started to wrap it with the grape leaves. Then I mixed in the remainder of our ingredients until everything was combined. I did do a taste test a couple of times and adjusted the ingredients based on my liking and I feel like that's the beauty of cooking is you have so much freedom and you can do so much adjusting to how you like your food. And now for the hard part, I actually had to watch a couple different YouTube videos to get down the rolling technique. From my understanding, you wrap these similar to how you wrap a burrito or an egg roll. You can probably tell this is the last one or two that I ended up rolling. I wanted to make sure that I got the technique down before I filmed myself doing it. 
The ones that you see that are really nicely rolled are actually my husband's. He was so much better at doing this than I was. These came out in a various range of different sizes and thickness, but they tasted really good. So at the end of the day, I guess that part didn't really matter. One of the ladies at the Armenian market that we purchased most of these items from actually said she finds a lot of peace and she feels really calm when she's wrapping grape leaves. And now that I've done it, I could totally see where she's coming from. For me personally, I feel like the process of preparing a meal, cooking it, and eating it with your family is actually really therapeutic. So the last step in this recipe is actually to steam everything. A lot of the recipes that I either read or watched recommended lining the bottom of your pan with grape leaves just so your actual yolanchi doesn't burn. I ended up adding a little bit of lemon juice into the olive oil and water mixture just for an extra layer of flavor. I thought this was a really neat tip when you're steaming, you want to add a plate with something heavy on top of it just so the grape leaves don't unravel when you're steaming. So this is how my Yolanchi came out. For my first time making it at home, I was actually really surprised. It was really good. So this was the full spread. We ate the Yolanchi with some hummus, pita bread. I made kind of like a fatouche salad. Um, of course, we have the dipping sauce and then we have a little bit of chechel cheese, which is an Armenian cheese. Overall, I'm so happy with the way that this came out. 10 out of 10. The next dish that I made is actually an Ethiopian dish called Maiserwat. I started off by making a berbere sauce. This is something that's absolutely essential in all Ethiopian dishes. You can see from the amount of spices that I have laid out, this dish is nothing short of flavorful. I used a mixture of already ground spices as well as seeds. So I started off by toasting the seeds. This is actually a mixture of cardamom pods, fenugreek, and allspice. Berbere is actually available in already combined powder form, but I wanted to stay true to the recipe and make it from scratch. So for mine, I actually ended up using fenugreek, chili powder, paprika, salt, ground ginger, onion powder, cardamom, coriander, garlic powder, cinnamon, and allspice. And I'll actually link the website for the recipe that I got for my berbere in the description box. So here I'm actually turning all those solid spices into a finely ground powder. So now I'm just incorporating all my spices together. I did taste test this a couple of times, but because I never made it at home, I really didn't know what to taste for. Something I've learned about Ethiopian cuisine is that it's pretty widely vegan and vegetarian friendly. So I thought an Ethiopian dish was perfect for this video. So now my berbere is completed. I'm gonna just store this away until I cook my dish. So the ingredients for the maiserwat are diced red onion, diced tomato, and of course lentils. I'm actually starting this recipe off with naitur kebe. It's a spiced Ethiopian butter. It's actually another ingredient that's pretty essential to this dish. I didn't film myself making it, but I will link the recipe in the description box. So I'm starting off by sauteing the onions, and then I'm adding a little bit of the berbere just to flavor the onions. I actually ended up adding a little bit of tomato paste in addition to the diced tomatoes. And then lastly, I'm just adding in the red lentils and water, and then I just give it a good mix until everything is evenly combined. I added about four generous tablespoons of the berbere, added the water, and then let this simmer on medium heat for about 45 to 50 minutes. Typically, Ethiopian dishes are eaten with injera, which is basically a type of Ethiopian bread. It's fermented. It's kind of like a sourdough, but that was a little bit too advanced for me. So I ended up just making kale with a little bit of the naiterkebe and the berbere. Also, let me know how I'm doing with the pronunciation of some of these words. Um, when it comes to names and cities and foods and different types of things, I try to pronounce them as close to the native language as I can. So let me know how I'm doing in the comments. So I just let the kale steam for about 20 minutes just until it got really soft and really tender, kind of like the consistency of greens. 
So this is how my dish came out. I was, again, actually pleasantly surprised with the final result. Finish this meal off with a little homemade chai just to balance out the spiciness. Next on the list is tempura and soba noodles from Japan. So I actually grew up eating these dishes pretty regularly. My mom is from Japan, so I find this pretty easy to make. You don't need a lot of different ingredients and you probably have most of this in your kitchen already. So I'm gonna start off by making the batter. This is just flour and water. You wanna just incorporate enough so the consistency is kind of like pancake batter. So I added ice cubes to the batter. This is something that my mom does. It makes the batter super cold, obviously, but the difference in temperature between the batter and the hot oil makes your vegetables super crispy. So now I'm just heating up some oil on medium to high heat. I don't really have a specific temperature for it. Um, the vegetables that I'm using are sweet potato and broccoli. Sweet potato tempura may sound weird, but it is my absolute favorite. You can pretty much use any vegetable for this recipe. You can use onions, you can use zucchini, you can use green beans, or even asparagus. I've seen so many different options for this. And like I said before, that's the beauty of cooking is you're not limited to just one thing. So while that's finishing up, I boiled some soba noodles. Typically I would eat this with rice, but I just didn't feel like eating that today, so I made some soba. So again, this is something that's super easy and super quick to make, and it made a really good side dish to eat with the tempura. I like to eat my soba cold with ponzu. Ponzu is basically like a soy sauce with lemon in it. So you basically just want to fry up your vegetables for about three to four minutes per side or until it's nice and golden brown. You want to make sure that you have a really crispy, crunchy outside. So this is how everything came out. I hate to do it, but I'm going to have to give myself a 10 out of 10 again. This was super easy and super quick to make. This is the full spread. You can see I have my soba. I like to top it with a little bit of green onion and ginger. And I also added a little bit of ginger into my ponzu, which I used as a dipping sauce for the tempura. So last up on the menu are tostones or fried plantains. So I'm actually starting off by making the rice just because it takes the longest to cook. I'm actually starting off by toasting my rice just because it gives it that extra layer of flavor and it gives it a really nice color. Then I'm adding a little bit of tomato paste just to again add some color and some flavor and then I'm just mixing that in until it's nice and combined with the rice. And instead of water, I like to boil my rice with vegetable stock. If you can't tell, a common theme in this video and in cooking in general is just to add as much flavor as you can. So now I'm going to cover that with a lid and then let it cook on low for about 20 minutes. So while the rice is finishing up, I'm going to move on to my black beans. I'm just using canned beans. I really didn't have the time to soak dry beans and cook them that way. But to, of course, add extra flavor to canned beans, I like to saute some garlic, some red onion, and some jalapeno. So I added in my black beans and I boiled that with some vegetable stock. I actually ended up adding in some cumin, salt, and pepper. And I basically just let that simmer until all the ingredients were nice and soft and ready to blend. Then I just took my immersion blender and blended up everything until it was nice and smooth in consistency. I actually prefer to eat my beans this way whenever I'm eating them with rice. Now moving on to the plantains. From my understanding, there is a certain way that you remove a plantain from the peel. It's not the same as peeling a banana, so I tried my best. So fried plantains aren't just eaten in Latin countries, they're also eaten in the Caribbean. You can eat them two ways. You can have them with salt, like the way I had mine, or you can have them sweet with cinnamon and sugar. 
So once I had it removed from the peel, I chopped them in about one inch thick diagonal pieces. Got some hot vegetable oil in a pan and I'm placing my plantains in the oil. I cook them for about six minutes in total, flipping them about once every 60 seconds or so. So you basically just want to fry them until they're golden brown. I will say I probably could have taken them out about a minute sooner because they were just a tad bit overcooked and a little too brown, but they still came out pretty good. So once your plantains are done frying, you want to transfer them over to a plate with a paper towel underneath just to absorb some of the excess oil. And then I sprinkled a little bit of sea salt on mine. So this is how everything came out. I will say beans never really look that appetizing to begin with, but trust me when I say this was really good. I had mine with a little bit of Salvadorian crema. So that was it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are familiar with some of the dishes that I made in this video and you have tips or ways that I can improve upon, please let me know. Let me also know down in the comments what are your favorite vegetarian dishes. I love cooking and I love trying new recipes, so please let me know. Thank you guys again for watching. I'll see you guys next time.